Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. Tough times never last, but tough people do. And if you're going through uh, some difficult issues uh, today, um, tomorrow's another day. Um, got a lovely lady on the couch. She came all the way from uh, Maui in Victoria. Her name is Rochelle. And um, yeah, she's a lovely soul. She's gone through um, some amazing things. Um, Mum and Dad split up before she was born. Um, mum didn't really uh, look after her grooming, you know, it's important. So the kids bullied her at school because she wasn't uh, groomed like the other kids. She had a boyfriend when uh, she was 16, he passed away. And after that, she attracted a whole bunch of crap, violent, abusive relationships. And um, But she's got two beautiful children and um, she's back on track. Thanks for coming. Thank you for Thanks having for me. coming. And I love your authenticity, you know. Shit relationship after shit relationship, abuse and um, intervention orders down at Morwell Magistrates Court, yeah. was it? So yeah. there's no more Maui Magistrates Court, yeah. Morwell. Yeah, you get to know all the magistrates. Yes. And they'd say, not another one. <laughs> did well, you, would did you attract would another that. one? <laughs> Isn't it funny how we, that's right. So, so what's our court system like, do you reckon? I think our court system is pretty shit, to be honest. Like yeah. a lot of times because you come in, it's kind of like, but you said this about the last partner and you said this about the last partner. It's like, I know, there's a lot of bad people out there. It's mm. like, I need your help. And it's like, why did you take so long to come to us? Why now? And it's like, because I need your help right now because I couldn't escape before to get your help. Mm. So starting with the great lady's life, so you grew up in Maui? In Morwell. In Morwell. Yeah. All right. And and mum did a, a pretty good job, but she was always busy, yeah? She was. She was working two jobs, so pretty much it was me and my siblings. So we yeah. had my older brother and my older sister, who's two years above me. She would mostly look after me, but she was still a kid as well. And you never met Dad? We met Dad probably twice. Mm. Then he said he would come see us again and just never, never mm. came again. But we mm. did have contact with his family, so his brothers okay. and my aunties and uncles, mm. but just not him. And a, and a funny topic, like grooming, that's right. Kids can be very judgmental, can't they? Yes, they can. So I was very, not very well groomed. Like I didn't even know that changing of underwear, I guess, every day and like yeah. having to have a shower and things like that. Like I was just like, this is how it is. Like So, so yeah, well, that's right. And so kids would uh, pick on you. Yeah, so people weren't very nice to me. Mm. They would say I smell and just, yeah, no one would really talk to me. People just didn't acknowledge my existence. So sometimes I kind of felt a little bit like I was invisible. Mm. Yeah, that's, um, that, yeah, and, and, and that's sort of why your self-esteem didn't um, didn't get that solid foundation, Rochelle, you know. Yeah. And, um, um, but um, look at you now, you're, you're sort of on the other side. And, and then uh, you, you knew a friend for um, quite some time. What was his name, your boyfriend? So that was Joel Sutton. Joel Sutton, God bless him. How did he pass on? So he was on a motorbike and it hit a pole. Yeah. And yeah, he, he died. So he was taken by ambulance and they mm. were trying to fly him in a helicopter and he passed away in the helicopter because mm. he got such bad brain injuries, like wasn't wearing a helmet or anything like that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you said, Rochelle, you know, she's got all these... Uh, People sort of picking on her, and, and it's funny with people, aren't they? They work in tribes, so once they all talk and stuff, and all of a sudden she's by herself, and Joel Sutton is the person she can talk to and feel comfortable with, and then at 16, um, he has a horrific death, and um, of course we feel very lost then, no? Yes, 100%, and mm. people just didn't want to, I guess, acknowledge me as usual. Like, we had a funeral, and it was like no one gave me a seat. I had to sit all the way at the back in a corner kind of mm. crying, and it was like... I'm always kind of towards the back when I really, you know, like I would have loved to say my goodbyes and be up close to him, but 
wasn't like that for me. Tell me about your two beautiful children. How old are they? What are their names? So Miller is seven in August, my little blonde little beach bag. Mm. And Layla is my little redhead, full of energy. Mm. <laughs> and she is five in May. Yeah, beautiful. It's nice how you you got a beautiful smile, how you smile when you think about the, the kids. That's gorgeous. And um, and uh, they're, they're with their father now. Yeah. Yep. When, when did you split up with him? So we split up before Layla was born. So that was about five, nearly six years ago mm. before she was born. Why? Was, um, we just, we didn't get on well. I ended up leaving and I lost everything. I ended up homeless mm. and I was pregnant with Layla. Mm. And then Miller was taken from me and I didn't see her for five months going through the family court system, getting mm. recovery orders and everything like that. Oh my God, you went through all that? Yeah, and then eventually she got to meet Layla when Layla was about a month, over a month old. It's funny how people can make up stories and concoct things, isn't it? Yeah. Fabricate things, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's difficult, but they're with you now and you love them very dearly. Yes, yeah. yes. It's beautiful, isn't it? So you attracted um, some abusive relationships and, um, and, 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 and what it is, folks, and there's a lot of people out there who do, isn't it? We, we tend to go for the same partners. Uh, is it the law of attraction or is it something we're radiating? And I really do believe until we spend some time by ourselves, then uh, we'll keep on making the same mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like I would say I was definitely attracted to people that I, they kind of felt sorry for themselves and I didn't want to, because I have that in me. Yeah. Like, it was like, oh, a person like you would never get, like, with a person like me. And it's just like... Right. I know that feeling of people not wanting to be around me. So, you know what, I'll give you a chance. Like, I'll give you the chance. Like, After I'll you met these... That. Where did you meet them? them at the pub or something? In the, uh, internet or something? No, I met them around with, I guess, friends, different sorts of Once friends. Once they were nice, uh, they turned nasty. What did they do? What was the worst thing that they did? So a lot of them, when I would try and leave them, a few, a few of them broke into my house and kind of just made themselves there and didn't want to leave, like slamming doors, I guess, saying that they would tell um, the girl's dad that I was on drugs and that I was mistreating them so I wouldn't slamming see the doors girls. Slamming you as well? Or? No, so no one, they didn't actually hurt me. It was just no. more they broke the things around me, which right. would scare me enough. Okay, so these were, how many relationships? God, six. Right. And then you decided that um, uh, m maybe be with a girlfriend and, um, and, and that's working out well. Yeah, so in my last relationship that wasn't so good, I was literally writing statuses on Facebook because my children were taken and I was like, I can't do I this anymore. I want to hear about your new relationship, the happy one after the break. But thanks yes. for coming on and thank you very much for uh, watching this. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Um, Rochelle's on the couch. She came from Maui. Two beautiful children. She's a great mum and she um, knows how to get on top of tough times. Um, yeah. Didn't really start um, uh, have a happy growing up, but then the boyfriend died. And I suppose that was a catalyst, but then a whole bunch of um, um, nasty relationships with people maybe took advantage of weakness. I'm not sure why. Uh, people act in this way and then um, you met the lovely Susie yes. see and another smile just like I spoke about the kids before Susie is bringing um, happiness into your life tell me about Susie oh Susie's just absolutely beautiful she's yeah. just got such positive energy and always building me up and saying you know like it's not you know fight for what you want I guess like don't let people beat you down it doesn't matter what people say about you like only you know you pretty much Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And um, and she's got children as well. Yeah, so she's got two little twins. Yeah, say hello to her. Hello, Susie. <laughs> she's great. It's great. Good. I'm so glad that Susie came into your life. Oh, me too. She is you a know, god. Because um, life life is difficult, folks, isn't it? It's difficult. You know, if, if too many things happen, you know, a lot of people want to check out. You know, a lot of people want to self-harm or suicide and stuff like that. You know, two years ago, uh, Rochelle, you tried to take your life. Yeah, so I was going through a lot of years of just self-harm, so cutting my wrists and things like that. And then 
when a very toxic partner took over my house, I kind of literally gave up everything and went to my friend's house and was cutting myself really bad and I had a long jumper on so they didn't know. And I wrote a letter, a suicide letter, and I told them to give it to my children. And they said, what is this? And I was just like, it's just a letter. Like, I just want you to give it to them just in case you see them before I do. And they're just like, okay. And I gave them the letter and I started walking to the train station to throw myself in front of a train. And then you my friends- already, You were yeah. bleeding already? Yeah, I was bleeding everywhere. I was bleeding And the everywhere. person you gave the letter to, didn't they say stop or call the ambulance? Or? So they had no idea pretty much. They're like, are you okay? Like you're acting a bit strange. And I was just like, I'm fine. I just want you to give the letter to Miller and Layla. Like this is a really important letter. Like just give it to them. And so I started walking to the train station and they read the letter. And then they ran up to me and they're like, you're not going anywhere. Like you're coming back to the house. And right. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I was like, I've made up my mind. It's fine. Like everything's fine. Like I just... I give up. Like, I can't do it anymore. Mm. Like, I don't want to do it anymore. I had enough. Yeah. And then they made me come back to the house. Two of them had both my arms. And they were like, we're going. Like, we don't care what you say. Like, we're calling the ambulance. Mm. And you're just going to talk to them. Like, you don't have to go anywhere. You're just going to talk to them. And I was just like, no, if the ambulance come, like, I'm going to lose it. Like, I'll absolutely lose it. And then the ambulance come. And they were such nice people. And I would never hurt nice people. <laughs> so <laughs> I was there just like, can you come with us, like, to the hospital? Like, we just want to have a chat with you. And I was like, okay. And then I went and had a chat with them and the nurse and, yeah, they told me I was going to psychiatric treatment. So to the Flynn Ward in Cheralgan, where I would get some support, mm -hmm. which I got zero support. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's quite amazing. I find that, um, you know, if you've got a private health cover and you hands, end up one of these fancy schmancy ones where, you know, they have five-star meals and, um, you know, private psychiatrists, but... Yeah, that's right. Once once you're in there, um, it's difficult to leave, isn't it? See, that's what I mean. It wasn't so difficult to it leave. Difficult like they were like, the beds are running up. Like you need to go out. Like are you ready to go out? And I was yeah. just like, yeah, I'm just just dropping off at the train station. Like, okay. And I was How, like, so, so once so that you had um, wonderful um, uh, ambulance officers, and then um, yeah, but the reception at the psych ward wasn't that nice. Yeah, no, nah, the nurses weren't that nice. They just pretty much want to drug you up to keep you on a high level that you're easy to deal with. Do you think some people just get complacent and, and they forget about that, that that caring factor that, you know, that... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how, how many days? One night or two nights? I was in there for 10 days. Yeah, good. Yeah. Did you um, end up um, with your bubbly personality with inspired some of the other people in there? Oh, absolutely. So we st I started a gym class because I was just like, at the end of the day, the only person that's going to bring me up is me. And it did kind of make me headstrong to know yeah. no one was in there to help me. Like, yeah. you've got to help yourself. Okay. Like, if you want to get up, you're going to get up. If you don't want to get up, then you ain't going to get up. Like... The, the people in there, did, did, did you find out their stories? Or? Yes, I found out a lot of stories. And yeah. some were so horrible. And to think that there wasn't any help in there was yeah. just heartbreaking. Like, mm. absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, because everyone had a different um, Yeah, like you had people with split and, personalities and stuff yeah. like that, which was crazy. And then people that were, I guess, schizophrenic. Yeah. And then people that were just addicted to drugs and they were in there because they had an addiction to mm. methamphetamines and they were and complacent yeah. with that. As soon as they left, they were going to get back on it. So I was like, <laughs> maybe this is the best place for you. And amongst all your new friends, um, you then started gym classes. Yeah, so I started gym classes as well as just going for walks, doing whatever I can to keep active because mm. I found whenever I got, I guess, angry or I felt down, I just needed to run. I was always mm. running. Just run. You feeling sad? Run. And I find it very strange because they, they they put everyone together, males and females, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, which, um, which is... Yeah, that was very full on. So yeah. some people would, I guess, expose themselves, but they weren't quite there in the mm. mind, so you couldn't really judge them, no. I guess, on that. That's but right. Yeah, you guys were all together. Mm, so that so the real healing happened uh, once you left, I suppose. You, you yeah. Said, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they did a great job at um, you know rebalancing your mind, um, uh, or maybe sedating you to the point where you don't want to um, take your life. Yeah. Um, and what and, and what did you do after that? Did you then um, find the right psychologist to work with? Yeah, I found the right psychologist and I guess Miller and Layla, like Miller and Layla just looking at them and, you know, when they would come in and say, are you coming home, mummy? Like, we really miss mummy. And it was just like, oh, I feel so hurt that my mum is gone and I'm going to do that to them. Like, mm. I'm going to do the same thing to them and for them to grow up without a mum and have those feelings. Got it, and I was just got like, it, got it. You can't do that. So when was that suicide attempt? What date? 
So that was about two years ago. It was in the April. So you're never going back? No. Amazing. No. We'll talk about your mum and uh, and about your wonderful future after the next break. We'll be back very shortly with the lovely Shelley, also known as Rochelle. We often hear people whinging about, you know, speeding fine or this or their mother-in-law or some, you know, bullshit thing going on when um, when we've got people like the lovely Rochelle or many of our other guests who really don't get that start and um, uh, and and it makes us wonder, you know, I always think if we threw, we all got together and we threw our problems into the centre of the circle and find out what other humans are going through, we'd take our little package and, and run, wouldn't we, you know? So you've got a beautiful journey, you're 26, but it looks like the first 26 years, um, a lot of challenges, but the next 26 years are gonna be absolutely amazing and spectacular. Absolutely, reach for the stars, always. Yeah, yeah reach for the stars. You, you, Sky's two the beautiful limit. children, you've got uh, um, Sue in your life, Sue. Yeah, Susie. Susie, and your ex, um, uh, I mean, he's not a bad bloke. He's looking after your beautiful children, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like He's all right. You ever get back together with him? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll never take your life again? No, never. You don't think? No. No, we're I know for a fact. We're saying never. on the break, um, you know, and a lot of people I represent in court, they, uh, you know, they're maybe at 14, some uh, psychiatrist says you're bipolar, you're... Um, ADHD or this, you've got a split personality or multiple, uh, and and they take that title and, and at forty they're saying, but I'm and I'm saying no, you're not. I, I'm convinced that people might have been that at the time, and um, and you, they said to you, you're you're bipolar, you're this and that, but yeah, so that's you've moved through that. Yeah, I always think don't let the title define you. No, really. don't let the title define you. Because you might be all happy one year and everyone goes, oh, you're that happy person, you're that happy girl. And then the next day you're not, you know, the next year. Yeah, that is right. And I guess everyone has their trigger points yeah. and you just got to avoid those trigger points 100%. So who's Rochelle now? Who's Rochelle now? Rochelle is someone that wants to look after children all the time because I love them. I'd love to foster care. That would be really nice. As well as get into the movie industry massively would be so good i've been in theater ever since i was a kid and i've just loved every minute of it who's your favorite actress i love margaret robbie beautiful yes and i love jennifer lawrence wow and melissa mccarthy honestly she is she's so funny i love her what about your favorite actor, actor. um god that would be hard because there's so many good male what about actors denzel washington you like denzel i do like denzel washington yeah, yeah from Morgan Freeman. there's some nice people out there What's your faith? Um, I kind of believe in Buddhism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Detachment, meditation. Yeah, meditation. Do you, into, do you get into a bit of meditation? Yeah. So I meditate every night to go to sleep to Good. calm my brain to really be able to wind down to go to sleep. Otherwise, I'm just a hundred miles per yeah, hour. Right. As well as me and the girls do a lot of mindfulness. That's wonderful. So we have a lot of little posters around the house saying things. So you look healthy and fit. You're off the. Um, Substances, I'll make sure. Yeah, so I used to be on marijuana from about 14 years old. I yeah. smoked marijuana and then only for fun. And then when Joel passed away, hit it massively. And yeah. then when mum passed away, I actually hit the chronic. So hit it really bad to numb that brain out. I just yeah. didn't want to feel or think. And it really did make me not feel or think. But then I was missing out of a lot of beautiful things were in front of me. Yeah, good attitude. So it's it's a fairly healthy lifestyle now. But every now and then yeah. you've got to let loose, don't you? Just sort of celebrate life, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Have a drink, yeah. yeah. If the girls are with yeah. their dad, absolutely. Country Victoria, a bit different to the city smoke. Um, people a bit different, aren't they? Judgmental if you're not yeah. part of the group. You got bashed one time on a bus. Yeah, so I was uh, bashed and robbed. Um, they took my stuff and... Yeah, I tried to get it back and then they pulled out a knife. It was Who's like, they? Girls, boys? I was a girl and a boy. On How long ago? Um, this was about three years ago. Wow. Is that what they're like um, in, in uh, Maui? Yeah, so a lot of times I don't really walk the streets anymore. Like I used to love going for walks. Yeah. Like I'll usually go to an oval to go for a walk or something like that because 
I was just getting picked on a lot. Like I was doing my shoelace up one time down the street and this girl just started abusing me because she said I was bending over for her boyfriend and everything. And I was like, I'm tying up my shoelace. Oh and then they tried to rob me, but I actually had nothing on me because I was going for like an exercise. So I didn't take anything with me. And yeah, they patted me down and was like, just going at me and I was crying and like no one was helping me as always. People this just walked past. This happened a few times. Yeah, so it happened. I had my little girls at the shop too, a shop around the corner from my house and they tried the same thing and they were like, it was the same people as well. Like, I know you, you stupid and all these blah, 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 unnecessary words and told me to come out the front and I was just crying and I just got down and was just like, please, like, yeah, because I don't want to fight. I don't want to hurt anyone. And I guess. Are they still around these people? Oh, absolutely. They're still around, yeah. God, so you don't feel safe going out at night time? Oh, no. You definitely don't go at no. night time in Maui, no. You ever thought about moving up to Queensland up north or something? <laughs> I would love to, but the girls would be away from their of dad. Of course, yeah. yeah. But it's not a bad place where you live, yeah? It's not the best, but no. there are some lovely, I guess there's always lovely people yeah. out there somewhere. <laughs> and and um, for fun these days, what, what, what do you do for fun? So I babysit, I go swimming. I really enjoy swimming. Good. Exercise is important. Yeah, I enjoy dancing. Dancing is great. Dancing is yes, fun. Yes, music. Music is beautiful. A bit of meditation and um, COVID would have been difficult for you. Yes, absolutely. COVID was very depressing. Depressing, lonely. Yeah. And, um, solitude is um, the enemy to mental health, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We all felt it, I think. You know, I, I had a lot of anxiety during uh, COVID. Um, amazing. So uh, what are the plans for the future? Hopefully become a model or actor, one of the two, and yeah. work in childcare as well. Hopefully do some children's entertainment. Yeah. And and I suppose you still have down days. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah, we all do. But um, and but but you realise that it's all Buddhism impermanent. Uh, That's right. Every day is a new day. All the good things never last, and all the bad things last either, folks. And if you're going through a difficult issue at the moment, remember. It's not going to be like this forever, you know. It's um, it's all impermanent. So is life. Before we know it, all be over. Rochelle, thank you very much for coming um, all the way from country Victoria. Make sure to have fun today. Really oh, enjoy well. yourself. Uh, have a meal and a bit of self care. And viewers, make sure to have fun today and really enjoy yourself. Have a meal, get a massage. We'll see you next week. Good night.